Hi everyone, in this video, I will show you how to fine tune the base model using the second method called parameter efficient fine tuning. We will focus on a technique called LoRa. Let's get started. LoRa is a way to fine tune models efficiently. It works by adding only a few extra parameters to the base model during training. This diagram explains it. First, we start with the base model and then we add new parameters. These new parameters are going to be trained and in the end, we get an adapter that we can attach or remove from the base model. In the previous video, we used instruction fine tuning, which trains the entire model. Here's a simple diagram. We start with the input. During feed forward, we go through the weights and then we we obtain the output. But during back propagation, we apply this formula. You can see that here we have W. These are the original weights that we started with. And during back propagation, we try to learn the delta W matrix. We add these two items in order to get the new weights. If the weight matrix W has this shape, we need to update 4 million parameters, which is a lot. Now let's see how LoRa makes this easier. You can see that the diagram changed a little bit. That's because with LoRa, we approximate the delta W matrix using two smaller matrices, A and B. When we multiply them, we get a matrix with the same shape as delta W. Matrix A has dimensions N by R and matrix B has dimensions R by M. The parameter R is called the rank and it helps us control how many new parameters we add to the base model. For example, if we keep the same size as before and set R to 2, we only need to update 8000 parameters instead of 4 million parameters if we decide to use instruction fine tuning. Now let's start coding. Before I show you the notebook, please make sure to pull the latest changes because I am updating the GitHub repository regularly. Now open VS Code or your preferred IDE and make sure to open the seventh notebook. And you will see that adding LoRa is very simple. Here we have the same things. I have just copied the previous notebook, which is 6.2 or 6.1. They are similar. And here we are just preparing the data. So here, make sure to load the fine tuning data set. Here we are going to use the regex tokenizer and we are going to load the tokenizer that we saved before. Make sure to tokenize the data, split it. And I'll go through this quickly because as I said, we have seen this in the previous video. So I don't want to waste time in this section. We arrived at this section where we are going to fine tune the model with LoRa. First, we are going to create the base model. We are going to add nothing. Make sure to run this. Here in my example, I have 13 million parameters. And here is the checkpoint that I, I, that I will load. And here is the new section. This is the new thing that I added in this notebook. We are going to add the LoRa layers. Here I have created another script that I called LoRa. It is located here inside the transformer folder. And what it does, it, it, it has two methods that we can use. The first one is get LoRa model. And the second one will print how many parameters are trainable. The get LoRa model method will take the previous base model. It will take a configuration and the device, of course, and it will try to add new parameters to it. How does this work? It is very simple. If I go back to the GPT language model class, remember it is located in this script, you can see that we have a lot of linear layers and LoRa, what it does is it will replace these linear layers with new layers that we call LoRa. And basically it will keep them. It will keep the, the previous linear layer and it will, it will add another layer with the new parameters. So whenever we, you see a linear layer in the GPT language model class, we will replace it with a new layer called, let's say, LoRa layer. And this is exactly what we are going to do 
in this script when we when we give the model to this method we are going to create a copy of the model and then we are going to replace the linear layers with LoRa layers and here are the LoRa, the LoRa layers it is very simple so let's start with the LoRa layer if you remember I showed you in the slides that we replaced the delta W matrix with two small matrices A and B here they are and by default because we did not start fine-tuning we initialize the B matrix with zeros so that we don't affect the base model but later during fine-tuning the weights in these two matrices will change so we have A B and we have alpha I didn't talk about this in the video but this is a value that we can use in order to scale the effect of the LoRa layers you will see where when we are going to use this and then here we are here is where we apply that multiplication so if we multiply a and b we get delta w and we multiply that with the inputs that we receive and we have this scaling factor that we can add on top of that multiplication okay so this is our new layer that we called LoRa layer but as I, as I said we want to replace the linear layer with a new layer so here is the new layer that we are going to use it is called linear with LoRa why because it is going to receive the previous linear layer here it is and we are going to add to it the LoRa layer so this is the trick in order to implement LoRa you keep the previous layer that the model was trained on but you add to it another layer in the initialization this will be equal to zero because we initialized b with zeros so it will have no effect on the linear layer so the model will not be affected but later during training we are going to change the weights in these two matrices and self.lora x will have an effect on the model and at the end if we want to save the adapter we are going to save only the new parameters that we added which are in the matrices a and b for each layer so this is how you implement LoRa and if I go down specifically in this method replace linear layers with LoRa layers we get the hyperparameters which are the rank and alpha we get them from this dictionary and here is the trick so here module.named children let me show you what this outputs so that you understand how this works so I, ha I have this notebook that I was using in order to create this implementation and as you can see mod if you take the model and call the named parameters method this is what you get basically you will get the layers you will get the name for each layer so here you have the token embedding layer and you have the weights here is the attention the self-attention layer and here is the first head because we have index zero here are the keys here are the queries and the values so after converting the model you see that we added those new LoRa layers but because we haven't done that yet here is how we do it so we loop over all layers and if that layer is an instance of the linear layer we are going to replace it with this new class it's simple but if that is not the case we are going to call this function recursively because sometimes we have objects inside of objects if I go back to the model script inside let's say the multi-head attention layer you have the head layer so you need to go deeper and deeper into the model so that you replace every layer possible this is why we use recursion in this example but if you don't use recursion then you will have a lot of nested for loops and it, it would look ugly so after replacing the linear layers with LoRa layers we are going to freeze the base model so here I call this method freeze non LoRa layers let me add an underscore because this should be a private method and here remember if I go back to apply LoRa to transformer you can see that those layers that were replaced they have LoRa in them in the name so we can detect that so if LoRa is in name we are going to train that layer but if LoRa does not exist in that name then we are going to freeze that model so after running this method the base model will be freezed but the new parameters that we added 
because we replaced the linear layers with the LoRa layers are going to be trainable. And finally, so this is what the GetLoRa model does. It will make a copy of the previous model. It will replace the layers with LoRa layers. And finally, it will freeze the base model. And here we have this print trainable parameters. It will print the total parameters, the trainable parameters, and the percentage of trainable parameters to the full model. Now let's close this. Let's go back to the notebook. And here is the method. It's simple. So, but I wanted to show you what, what it has inside so that you understand what's going on behind the scenes. Now, if I run this, you see that I get the LoRa model parameter. Uh, sorry, I get the LoRa model. And if I feed that model to this method, I get 40 million parameters. The trainable parameters are 0.42 and we will train just 3% of the, the total parameters. And as I said in the slides, if you change the rank value, you will change the number of parameters that you will add to the model. So if I decrease this, then the trainable parameters will decrease. So as you can see, now we have 0.21 million parameters because remember matrix A and matrix B are affected by this by this value if i increase it then we will increase the number of trainable parameters significantly but we want to keep this small so that the training becomes efficient so i'll use four but feel free to change that value okay so now we can if you want you can generate from the base model and the LoRa model and you will see that those new layers that we added will not affect the transformed model because the matrix B is set to zero. After that, we are going to estimate the loss. This, this did not change. Let's save the checkpoints. I did not change this either. But in the training loop, instead of using the base model, I am using the LoRa model. And make sure to update that here also because the optimizer should only update the trainable parameters. It should not touch the base model. This is the only change that, uh, that I made to this notebook. And here, make sure to change the file path so that you save the checkpoints for the LoRa model. So I will run this for, let's say 10 epochs. I'll make, I'll change the learning rate to one in negative four, and let's change eval interval to 10. I will run this and I will come back. I am back and the model finished fine tuning. Let me plot the loss curves. Okay, they look like the previous video and I will assume that the generations are not going to be good. Okay, so again, the assistant or the fine tuned model was able to pick the new chat format. That's good, but the text is not, is not good. Okay, so this time it gave me an emoji. But as you can see, I cannot converse with this model. I was expecting this because if we fine tuned the full model and we did not get good results, using adapters which only add few parameters won't help either. But at least I have showed you how to apply LoRa in order to fine tune a base model. And in the next video, which I think will be the last one in this course, I will try to revisit the previous steps in order to train a good base model and do a solid fine tuning step and hopefully I get better results. I mean currently we have a I would say medium base model which is not bad. I mean I'm pretty happy with the results that we got currently with this limited data but I'll make sure to try to do something solid at the end so that we end this course with something positive. So I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.